Welcome to another episode of Savage Time TV. I'm your host, A.B. Brisley. Today, I got special guest, Sean James, a.k.a. Saj the Guy. How you feeling, bro? I'm doing great, bro. You know, blessed to be here. I appreciate this opportunity, too. Nah, I appreciate you, man. You you going, you about to give us the, the juices, man. You about to give us the juices, man. I appreciate your presence, bro. Like, yes, this is a real good interview for me. Like, it's different. Um, so, I appreciate the new perspective. Uh, also, he's the owner of Savage Fit Nutrition, bro. The owner of Savage Fit Nutrition. So, uh, can first off, getting into it, where are you from? I'm from, you know, born and raised Newark, Delaware. Um, you know, just been been a local kid my whole life, pretty much. Um, just wanted to expand and, you know, just keep making the awareness grow. And, and the small community I am, I'm in, and then, you know, I'll branch yeah, to as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, going up here in Delaware is is interesting, man. It's uh, small, small but big at the same time. Right. Um, it's got a lot going on. You wouldn't think it does when you get here. It has a lot going on. But for uh for the people that don't know, could you tell them just how it was growing up here in Newark, Delaware, coming up? Uh for me, you know, it was it was real slow paced. Uh, you know, at the time I ain't know it was slow paced till I started going to other, you know, different uh states and you know, experience different things. But it was cool, you know, uh had my core group of friends, we do our thing together. And uh, you know, we just have a good time. It ain't too much to get into. So, you know, we Which is fun. good and bad sometimes. Exactly. You know, like as a kid, you want to just have fun and do a lot of things. But also, I realized with hindsight now, it kept me on track with a lot right. of things that I was trying to do. So, you know, I, I ain't mad at it. It's cool. How did your interest in health come about? Uh, So, for me, like to go all the way back for real, yeah, go for take, me, take us to, take us to seventh, the root, man. Seventh grade, man, was crazy. Okay. Seventh grade. So, I tell this story to everybody. Um, seventh grade, Maybe from seeing me now, y'all won't believe it, but I used to be like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, 260. We had school. You know, in a school they have, uh, you familiar with pickle sticks? Pickle sticks. They pickle like sticks. corn dogs, but the breakfast style with the yeah, breakfast yeah, link yeah, yeah, inside yeah. with the pancake right on right, our side. Right, right. So, seventh grade. Shit's a smack. What? Oh, it's a <laughs> Get that shit in the oh. syrup. That shit was Bro, smack. Crazy. That shit so, was smack. So, one day at, at lunch, they was giving out the pickle sticks. But, you know, instead of giving out two, they was giving out four. Mm. So I'm like, oh, man. You got to get the four. got to get the four. But me, back then, being on my fat boy game, bro, I got a double lunch. That's eight pickle sticks. It's get like that sometimes. And it, it do, bro. Then, it was, instead of giving out one milk, I guess they had too much. They was giving out two. So it was four pickle sticks and two milks. I got a double lunch, <laughs> so you, bro. Eight <laughs> pickle sticks, four milks. I don't, like, thinking now, I'm like, yo, I was disgusting, bro. And you was fucking it up. Bro, killed it all. Everything. Then, uh, you know, lunch over, we go back to the class. You know, at the, the desk is connected to the chairs. Right. So it was all one unit. Yeah. I tried to go back in. Bro, I couldn't fit in. Couldn't fit in the desk, bro. I'm like, yo, and my desk was at the front of the room. So everybody can see you at this So time. I just go to the back, you know, sit at the round table with the, the loose chairs and all that. And the teacher's like, Sean, why aren't you sitting at the front? You know, or come back to your desk. <laughs> she, know, she know why you keep uh, watching. I say, I was like, yo, dang, all right. So I went up there, bro, try to sit in there. I couldn't fit, you know? You feel crazy. You feel like, dang, like you just feel real bad inside. You know, kids back in the day, bro, they mean, bro. Reckless, definitely. So, definitely, where was you at? Where, where was you at? Uh, I was at Kirk Middle School. Oh, okay, you was at Kirk. I went, okay, I went to Georgia. So it was, you know... I was, little... I was cool with a lot of people. Though. I just still felt bad, bro. So right. I just asked to go to the bathroom, right? I go to the bathroom. I go in the mirror. I look myself in the face. I say, yo, this is done. I'm over with this. I'm making a change. And ever since then, I can remember from that day, bro, that's when my paradigm, my mind started to shift. Like, look, we got to make an ultimate change. It ain't going to happen overnight, but that's where I got started at, bro. Okay, okay, okay. So it's... So it's... Oh, all right. I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> oh, for now, for real, bro, that's a, that's a good story. It usually takes you to hit rock bottom, hit something to smack you upside the head. For bro, I wore like, a size 40 right. jeans, seventh grade. Oh, yeah. I was 260. Oh, yeah, like, was out there. I had Oscar and Slaughter disease in my knees. Basically, oh, that's a, oh, wow. it's when your growth plates and your knees are growing too fast for the bones in your legs. So the growth plate growing too fast, so it put a lot of pressure in your knees, and you grow like these lumps on the undercap of your kneecaps. Okay. So that built a lot of pressure and tension and pain. So the weight wasn't helping at all with that. So I had a whole bunch of stuff going on, bro, where I was just like, look, man, I, I got to make a serious shift. Seriously. Okay. Okay. And uh, health is such a broad field. What helped you narrow your focus? 
Uh, for me, it was so my mom. She's in the um, she's in the healthcare field, but she works in the pharmaceutical industry with you know as a doctor. So, you know, growing up, you know, my mom doing her own thing, having her practice at the time, you know, working with Christian care too. I seen what that lifestyle could bring, and it wasn't you know, yeah, it's a lot of money at points, but health wise, you're not getting any good nutrition, you're not getting any good health advice really at all. You know, you just getting put on medication, you're gonna be stuck on for a while. So for me, I was like, I already know how this route is going to produce, so let me try a different route. And then I started getting into, you know, holistic medicines, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Indian medicines, Asian medicine, African medicine, and stuff like that. And I started to realize these natural medicines, you know, made me feel great. So obviously, what this got going on is legit. So I had to just lock in with that more, and that's how I got more in tune to what I'm doing now. Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. All right. So your mom was in there you know, mm-hmm. from an early age. Okay. <laughs> nah, it's usually, it's, it's crazy. Most people that have uh people that are around something like around health, it, it always affects them, man. Seeing, because I've always, I always think it's funny seeing life like that. I think it always affects you. So you've seen it from a young age. I guess it's crazy. I played a part. Um, I see that you were, uh, you're board certified. Um, or you, I saw that you're, you're board certified. So I would say, uh, did you educate yourself? Like, did you do a lot more research or was it more like a traditional route? Or uh, so, a mix of both? So me, it's, it's definitely a mix of both. When I first started, so it all really started recently for me to get the passion that I'm in now with what I'm doing. Uh, my mom had a mini stroke. Okay. And, you know, a whole left side of her body was, you know, almost paralyzed for a while. She could barely even walk and move around and stuff. So, you know, she was seeing all these specialists in D.C., New York, Philly, Maryland, everywhere. And, you know, all the doctors, they didn't know what was wrong with her, why she was feeling the way she was feeling. So I just took it upon myself, like, look, man, my mom going through it. She needs some help. None of these people were giving us an answer. So, so you started doing your own research. I started doing my own research. And then, you know, over time, I said, look, my, you know, you exhausted all your resources. You know, just, just let me help you out. You know, it ain't going to hurt. You see what I'm doing with myself, so let me help you out. So she's like, okay. And, you know, over time... You know, she started to start feeling a lot better. She also had gray matter spots developing her brain throughout that stroke. Mm-hmm. So when she went to go back for her MRI again after the six months, they was all gone. Like, they was never there. And, you know, if you know anything about brains, the brain doesn't regenerate commonly. It has the ability to, but that just doesn't really do that, especially with the diets that we're on and stuff like that nowadays right. in the Western culture. So, you know, doing that sparked me to be like, yo, if I did all this on my own, imagine if I really learned more and really took it more serious. So you basically healed your mom. I I say the most high just using me yeah, as, yeah, as yeah, a tool. Yeah, as a vessel. But yeah. Exactly, bro. So That's dope, bro. Bro, I appreciate that. And just to see my mom still out here smiling, doing her thing back at the gym. You know it's real. You know the yeah, research. Bro, is so real. That's what's I, up, it's, bro. it's a blessing to see that. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us about the process of you getting uh getting your certifications of going, you know, having to go that, you know, get the black and white, get the certifications and things like that for people that are interested in watching this. Could you tell us about that process? Right. So for me, um, you know, I'm deep into my spiritual life. So I, one night, uh, I remember this vividly. It was around three thirty in the in the, in the Verizon time. Um, I was just thinking, and you know, the spirit came up to me like, yo, man, you need to get into this seriously, take it for real. So I started looking up different like health coaching programs and stuff like that. And I came across a school called Trinity, Natural School of Health. And it's an online based school, and um, they have real good curriculum program going on. So I just instantly seen it, and I just, you know, went with my gut feeling, and I just applied, you know, paid the money, and, you know, just stayed down, did all the studying and research. And then when I got done, I'm like, wow, yo, I really learned so much through this. And that was just to get my personal certification. So then um, after that, I was like, I want to take it a step further and get board certified. So I'm board certified through um, the AADP. That's the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. Um, You know, so just wanted to stamp myself in all different levels of health, pretty much, bro. You know, just to show people that. Yeah, I'm knowledgeable, but now you see the certification, so yeah, yeah, you really was, know what's going yeah, on. Exactly. I'm not just talking just to talk. Okay, okay. Well, that's good because I I've never I've always thought I've always thought that like holistic was just a because you people don't know that much about it, so right. like you don't really know like the entry point of getting into it, getting like even when it comes to just research and random things like we're gonna talk about. So you getting certified, I was just interested in like how you even go about that. But okay, 
I get it now. It's done. It's tons of different schools. You kind of got to just be in tune with what you feel is best for you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you just want to be a personal trainer, if you want to get into, you know, more weight training stuff, you just got to figure out what's good for you. And for me, like I said, you know, dealing with my mom and stuff like that, I knew the natural health, holistic health, healing and stuff like that was was good for me. So, you know, I just tapped in with that. Okay. Uh, holistic. Uh, for the people that don't know, some people hear that word and they don't really know what that means. Could you define, could you, could you give us the definition of holistic and the differences between holistic and maybe, um, uh, I guess, whatever whatever else, what, what, right. what separates holistic from everything else? So say. basically, holistic is, you know, you go to a doctor and they'll say you're diagnosed with this from the symptom that you say you have. So we don't diagnose anyone with anything. We look at the person that we're seeing, our client. And then from there, we assess their entire body, a holistic. So it's spelt with an H, but if you add the W in front to bring it as whole, we're looking at the whole entire person. Okay. And it's not just physical. We're looking at emotional. We're looking at mental. We're looking at spiritual things that may be broken that need to be healed. So it's a lot of things that go into it. It's more than just the surface of physical health. Okay. And would you say uh, more so, I guess you were talking about your mom before, other than that, is there a reason why you wanted to go that specific route? Because, I mean, you could have still, you know, because you could have known, you know, helped your mom, that's it, and then probably went into something maybe more profitable, maybe right. something more easier to get into. Because I know with health, you can, like we've been talking before, it's easy to just, you know, put something out there. Right. So uh, could you tell me just why why you wanted, what made you really want to go that holistic route instead of maybe the quick quick money scheme, I guess? Uh, for me, it was... It was because it was never for the money, bro. Um, it was really just for the genuine love to see someone heal, to someone to see someone you know regain their joy back in their life. Um, so that was the main thing, the main focal point for me. If if someone's not happy, it don't matter how much money you got. You got billions of dollars, but if you're not happy, if you're not healthy, then all that money don't mean nothing. You just grinded your whole life or whatever happened, and you just got money for no reason. So for me, it was to you know put. Put the client first. Put put um you know someone's health first, and then the money and stuff will come. I ain't worried about the money because I know what I'm doing is true. I'm true to the grind, so the money just gonna follow itself. Word, word, and that all led to you opening up Size Fit Nutrition. Exactly. Um, first off, give you roses on that, giving you flow, your flowers, man. That's dope that you were able to you know turn this into a business. I appreciate Official, that, bro. Officially, that's dope that you uh putting your energy into that. Everybody here for fans being entrepreneurs, so that's dope right. to see another, especially a black man out here working for himself. Appreciate that's great. It, um, could you tell us what the S A and J stand for? So S A and J is is my initials, Sean, and my middle name Antonio James. Yeah, I gave you all my government. Y'all ain't gotta go research me or nothing, <laughs> but gave it out there. But it really stands for mind, body, and spirit. Okay. So when you looking at size fit nutrition, you're looking at mind, body, and spirit nutrition. I'm providing you food to heal you your whole entire being, the essence, the divinity of yourself. You know, so tap it into your mind, your body, and your spirit. Once you hear all those different areas, you'll start to see everything in your life that's transformed and ascend and manifest the way that you really wanted it to. Okay, okay. And why become an entrepreneur? Um, for me, I just never liked nobody being on my ass, bro. I, just, <laughs> no, I, I, like, I feel you on that, that like, micromanage. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I worked in corporate for like three months, and that that just checking me for everything, going to the back, everything is being checked. I'm just yeah, gonna, bro, like, like it's a difference. I, I'm okay with being held accountable. That's right. not what I have a problem with. It's like the micromanaging part. So then, you know, like I said, my mom had her own practice when I was growing up. Mm. So before she had right, sold man. it. It was like, I seen what the entrepreneur life was like. I seen the yields it could bring in. I seen the benefits of it. So since I seen that, that's all I kind of really knew. And then when I see her now, you know, working for someone else, I'm like, yeah, this this definitely not for me, bro. So if I got to, you know, sacrifice, stay down, you know, be humble and patient for right now to get to where I want to go, I'm fully cool with that because I know, you know, I know where I'm headed towards. Okay. Okay. That's dope that you got that mindset. Um, and what is your goal and uh, what you would say vision for Sash Fit? Uh, my goal and vision, I would say, is you know to provide the best quality health service and products, you know, to the community, and then to you know outreach as far as possible, um, to you know help as many people as I can, you know, 
I'm not going to be able to, you know, awaken everybody. I'm not going to be able to help everyone. But if I can, you know, touch and affect as many people as possible, I did my job. Okay. Okay. And you had told me before that you yourself are plant-based. Right. Um, you know, on plant-based diet. Could you explain to us why? Why you chose to be plant-based? Um, so it started back in 2017, um, back my senior year in college. You know, I just, you know, just felt like I needed a shift, man. Like, I came back. I had surgery on my labor. I tore my labor in my shoulder my junior year playing basketball. Had surgery. And, you know, the whole time, I was down, depressed, bro. Like, I didn't know what was going to come next. I probably gained, like, 40 pounds. And when I got cleared to finally start working out, the season was, like, two months away. And I was like, yo, what a- <laughs> What I'm going to do is get up this 40 pounds. So I was talking to one of my good friends, Dante McGill. He played at FIU. He played pro overseas now, Poland and um, different different other countries as well. And he was like, yeah, bro, um, just try cutting out meat every now and then. I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. So like every other day, I would cut food. I would cut out meats, cut out chickens, you know, burger and stuff like that. And I would see the results come. And... um. Then over time, I was just like, man, from the results I was seeing, I was like, man, let me just go all in with this for real. And then from there, I just, I never looked back, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's the, 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 again, yeah, again, you had yeah, to make that body shift. That's- and it's, it's, it's not easy, but um, you got to tell, you got to tell yourself in your mind, oh, it's cool. This is what I do now. You know what I mean? Like, it's tough at first, but then once your, your body is in sync with your mind, it's just what you do. So it'd be days where, you know, somebody's baking chicken or they making mac and cheese or something. I'm like, yeah, that smells really good. But at the end of the day, I know I won't take a bite because it's just what I do now. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's get into the CMOS, Joe, man. That's, <laughs> we got to get into the CMOS, gotta Joe. Get First off, it. explain to us what CMOS gel is and what your CMOS gel provides. Right. That's so CMOS, CMOS is a plant allergy. It's basically a superfood. Um, one of the best superfoods known to mankind right now. Um, sea moss is like a slang term that people use in like the Caribbeans for Irish moss, but Irish moss is really a, a substance plant that contains high aminos, uh, fatty acid contents, uh, proteins, fiber, you know, a lot of minerals. Not 92, like everyone's talking about. Like, it has minerals in there. It has those minerals in there, but our body only needs about 25, 26 essential minerals to operate and to function every day. So, um, you know, it has a lot of things, but a lot of things people don't know is they never seen what real Irish moss look like, nor have they benefited from it. So, with all the things going on out here, people is buying sea moss thinking that they getting what they see online of what the benefit's supposed to bring, but it's you getting a whole nother plant. You getting something that's not giving you none of those results right, that you right, think you're right. supposed to get. Exactly. And then, you know, over time they wonder, oh yeah, this stuff don't work. This stuff is BS. And it's like, no, you just was buying the wrong thing. Exactly. You was getting something that you wasn't really getting. So um what I got is I just got in tune with a lot of people, uh, you know, holistic natural paths, you know, other certified doctors in this area, in this field, and they connected with a lot of people and they they blessed me with the connection to, you know, get in touch with some real Irish moss vendors. So um, now I got legit Irish moss. I've been having it for some time now. And man, this stuff is powerful. It helps your body relax, cool your central nervous system down, okay, your digestive yeah, system, benefits. Uh, digestive system support, um, helps with mental clarity, suppresses your appetite, it helps build stronger hair, nails, skin, teeth. Like y'all see me on here. I ain't, you know, just just what it is. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so man. we just gotta keep we gotta just get in tune with the real. You know, so much lies and BS going on out here. We just get accustomed to, you know, the lies, they sound good to us. They do. Like, they do. Until this morning. Until this morning I was right. I was on the lies, y'all. Until this morning, I found out today. I found out I've been taking the wrong shit, to the guys. We ain't go. I ain't going blast them, but let's just say I've been taking the wrong <laughs> shit. And I, y'all see me on Instagram. I be posting in everything with confidence, and I found out that it's some bullshit. And it's okay though, bro, because you know, people. We just don't know what we don't know until we get informed, and and that's one thing. But then once you get informed, and then you still is operating in that capacity you was operating in before. 
Then I was like, all right, well, now we're coming into deeper areas. We're coming into character issues, integrity issues. And a lot of people, they lack a lot of those areas. They just want the money, you know? So health, this field, this not for that. If you're trying to, you know, scan people's credit cards and do everything else, do that for the money. You know, that's not good. You already know that's not good, but do that. But this, this, this is a field to help people. So you promote one thing when it's really not just so you can get a quick buck. It was never that, and, you know. With me, it's never gonna be that. So, just trying to just keep setting the part, man. And the people that got the open ear to hear the truth and want to hear it, you know, I'm the guy that they want to come see. Okay, okay. And out of all your uh, CMOS gels that you offer, what would you say is your favorite flavor? I got a crazy sweet tooth, so I'm gonna probably say the goji berry. Goji berry. Yeah. What's that? What's the, what's goji berries is um. It's a basically a fruit that has high antioxidants. It's very sweet. To me, it tastes like cake. Um, it's also a complete... It tastes like cake? Bro, to me, because I don't eat cake no more. So That's it's wild. really sweet, bro. So when I need something real sweet just to trigger my sweet tooth craving, I just take a scoop of my goji berry or the blueberry that I got. Um, it also is high in amino acids. Like I said, it's a complete protein profile, and it has, it's a good source of fiber as well. So, you know, you... For me, I would definitely say the the goji berry for sure. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to definitely check that out. Uh, the transition e guidebook. Could you tell right. us about that and what that offers? So my guidebook, my e guidebook, is a guidebook on how to transition from a carnivorous way of living to mm, a plant based lifestyle. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe it sounds so reckless and aggressive. But that's the thing, bro. Brother. Like we don't understand. You know, when you eat meat. You're not just eating the meat. You eating they had parents, right? You, yeah, oh, that. <laughs> but you eating the 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 blood of that animal as well. So when oh, you do true. that, you're actually adopting carnivorous traits. Well, people that eat meat usually have short tempers. They usually can get angry quickly. They usually could get flustered quickly. It's because it's just the nature of the food that you're nature eating. Nature of the beast. Exactly. So. People see me now, they under, they be like, bro, you just real calm. Your discernment is real chill. You know, the vibe is just chill. It's like, just because my temple has been cleansed. I, you know, I just don't eat that stuff no more. So it's real, it's real hard to get me, you know, out of character. You got to do some real crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm not telling y'all, you, oh, I'm going to get Sean mad. Now, don't do that, yo. Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Just, we just got to realize what we really doing to ourselves. So um, basically, it break down the steps of, not just meats, but also like dairy, eggs, soy-based products, you know, and other hybrid vegetables that are that were never really grown in the wild. They were yeah, tell cultivated us about the by. Tell us about the eggs. Tell them about the eggs. That was interesting. The eggs is crazy, man. If I recommend anything to give up first, it'd be the eggs. Eggs to me is worse than meat and dairy because eggs is the highest containing pathogen food. On the earth, known to man, pathogens is like foreign bacteria and matter that go through your bloodstream, digestive system, and all your other systems in your body that will help make it sluggish and slow it down. So we don't want to put anything else to slow us down. We want us to speed up so we can have circulation, so we can think clearer, so we can move better, so we can just have better activities in life. You know, so with the eggs, they build a lot of mucus, they build a lot of inflammation. They build a lot of digestive issues. So we want to put the eggs to the side. You know, oh, well, what about egg whites? No, bro. All that. All that stuff got to go. It's it's tough at first, but it's once you get off truth, it for man. like a month, you're going to feel a lot better. And you're going to be like, yo, I, yeah, eggs taste good, but I don't want it. And, you know, the transition in, they got like different uh, like eggs, uh, plant-based pamp plant-based egg replacements and stuff like that. But like I said, the next step is the soy products. You go look at any product on the shelf, any crackers, cookies, I guarantee you it's going to have soy in it, bro. <laughs> and for men, soy is horrible because yeah, soy contains high estrogen content. Right. So people don't understand this, but... People, men and women, it's a balance of masculine and feminine energy. So even men need some estrogen in their life, but you don't want to be estrogen dominant because you're a male. We need more testosterone. 
So if we eat a lot of soy-based products, right. the estrogen levels would be a lot higher in right. our bodies. That's why you know you might see a lot of gay men out here nowadays, and you see a lot of just you know submissive men when you know submission isn't a bad thing, but you need to know when to use it and when to you know assert your aggression. Mm-hmm. And you know I see a lot of nowadays, the women is becoming a new man. Right. The women's is the one working full time jobs. You know, making the money, being the breadwinners, doing all the things that men was originally supposed to do. So the equilibrium and the balance is thrown off. Right. So for us men, I say eliminating soy would be another great tip for you because you'll be able to get that masculine and feel back. And then you just have to find out your balance, you know, whatever it's 95, 5, 90, 10, 80, 20 of your masculine and feminine energies inside you. Okay, okay. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely heard about the soybeans. I definitely heard about that. It's, it's soybeans, bro. Like so, just soy, soy in yeah. general. Okay. Like soy is in a lot of stuff, bro. Like you just look at the ingredients. Anything that's in the box, I guarantee you is going to have soy in it. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That's a lot of shit. Uh, can you tell us about your uh, detox program? So the detox program is an herbal detox program. It's for 10 days. Um, it's also made by a master herbalist. Shout out to my guy, man. I appreciate you, bro. Um, and it's going to help cleanse your body out, cleanse your bowels. You know, like most people don't understand that the, the typical human has about five to about 40 or 50 pounds of waste in your colon. So a lot of times you can think you fat. You're not really even that fat. You just got a lot of waste built up. And the waste ain't just feces or fecal matter or stool. It's, you know, sweat. It's your pores, your arteries, your lymph nodes, they clog because you're not getting circulation. So this helps break down all that debris, hardened matter, and clean you out. You know, you some people can get a better reaction than others, but it's all about where that person is when they start. You know, some people is healthier than others when they want to start a transitional process. So depending on where you are, it's gonna help cleanse you out, you know, raise your energy, suppress your appetite. You know, give you more mental clarity and, you know, just help you along to just give you a better mindset going along. Were you nervous about starting your own business? Um, For me, I, I can't say I was nervous. Okay. It was really just like, like I said, bro, I seen my mom going through it. And at the time when I was young, I didn't recognize what I was seeing. But then when I think back now, I'm like, yo, so she was going through this at that time because now I have my own experience of what I went through. So it was really just me knowing that, you know, entrepreneur is like it's like the markets. It's like a it's like a stock or like forex charts. Like you go the nature of entrepreneurship is up and down. You know, everything has to balance itself out. So there's gonna be times where I'm up. There's gonna be some times where everything might be, you know, plateau. And there's gonna be times where I might, you know, be down a little bit. But that's when you know that already when when you're getting into it, mm-hmm. your mindset don't waver because you know, I right, it's just, you know, it might be a rough month for me. But then the next month could be the best month you ever had. So for me, it just keep my mindset locked in, knowing that you know it's going to just have goods and bad. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, being uh, being a black man, that's for sure. Do you feel as if there's more pressure on you to succeed in your business? I would say yeah and no, but more yeah because you know there's not too many uh, black men, you know doing their own thing. You know, when we see another black man doing something, it's great, but that's not a lot of us. And I think it's because, you know, we, we want to feel comfortable with a job or mm-hmm. security. And I don't know how COVID ain't show people that, you know, your job's not as secure as you might think yeah, it is, COVID bro. COVID showed all that shit. It's, it's, it's on a string. It's crazy, bro. So for me, the most secure thing for me is, you know, I believe in myself, so the business going to go as far as I go. So as long as I don't stop, the business not going to stop. So the pressure for black men, I feel like is, you know, find what you love to do and find what's easiest for you to monetize in a way where it can make a lot of money or some, but don't worry about the money. Just do it because you know what you're doing is actually helping people out and when they see you doing that, people gonna respect that. All races, all genders, they gonna respect that. Okay, okay, that's good, man. I like that. Uh, why do you think that living a cleaner, healthier lifestyle, more holistic lifestyle, has been such a struggle for people 
people in general, but especially the black community in particular? I feel like it's because of, you know, how he was raised. You know, grandma's soul food. You know, all the foods that we used to eat, like you said, the baked mac, the fried chicken, the collard greens, the potato salad, right. all that stuff tastes mm-hmm. great. It does. But for our genetic makeup as Africans, Moorish, you know, black people, that stuff don't sit well for us. That stuff is food that slows us down. Which is why maybe all of, a lot of us are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant and a lot of people say, oh, I got the itis after they ate a lot. The itis isn't, oh, just because I ate a lot. You can get the itis after eating a little bit. All it is is your digestive system overly working itself to break down all that food that that's you just that ate. And it's overly working itself because you uh, ate so much. That's probably why you got to go to sleep. And you tired, so you have to rest so your digestive system can work. People think, oh, I just, you know, this food was so good. I know it was good food, so now I got the itis. No, nah, bro, you just ate too much. And now your body is in a mucus acidic state. So now your, your system is having to break down all that food. Like the, 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 the stomach itself is an acidic environment. It has to be to break down that food. But if it's already acidic and you put putting more acidic foods in there, that's only going to cause more problems over time. So for me, once you adopt a healthier lifestyle... You're not going to feel as tired because your digestive system is going to have a break. It's going to be at a rest. So now, all that energy that was going towards digestion is now going to your daily activities. Being able to make more decisive decisions. Being able to think better. Being able to think clearer. And then you realize, dang, yo, your mind don't even be on food like that no more. It be on your next activity or your activity at the task at, at hand now. So, you know, just... If, you, if you're serious about whatever you want to do and have longevity in life, I feel like even if it ain't going plant-based, just making small adjustments, man, will, will go a long way for everybody. Okay, okay. What would you say you're most proud of, of, of during your journey as an entrepreneur and, and in this holistic, healthy lifestyle? For me, I probably, I'm definitely most proud of my, my clients and my customers that consistently are imp- looking to improve themselves, like, when I get a message like, hey, bro, James, you know, I haven't had a blood transfusion in the last six months because of the advice and the attention of you and your products, you know, or bro, I'm down 10 pounds. It took me a whole year just trying to lose 10 pounds. And now I got it off in a month because of your help. Like hearing stuff like that, that really makes me feel like, yo, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because... I'm helping other people change their lives. Like if I was just to have all this information and keep it to myself, I, I would get bored, bro. Like right, right, <laughs> I would right. get like I would feel real lonely. Like ain't nobody caring what I'm doing but me. But it is people that want to attain things that I have done for myself. They just don't know a true source to get it from. So for me, it's all about integrity, authenticness, um, you know, high character. And just showing my truest self because, like I said, bro, it's too many lies out here. It's too many people just trying to come up on a quick buck. So even if I have a slower grind and it's a slow progress, eventually I'll get to the top because the people is going to speak for me. Okay. Okay. Okay, man. That was dope. Uh, Could you talk to about, could you tell me about uh, your definition of mental health and how you keep your mental health on the up and up day to day? So mental health, I feel like, is about how we talk and view ourselves every day, not de- not depending on what someone else got to say. Um, so basically, like life is all about perspective, right? So if I was sitting in this room today, but I'm in a bad mood, and then the next day come, I'm sitting in this room, but I'm in a good mood, what changed with the room? Nothing. It's just my perspective. So men- mental health is about how we viewing and talking to ourselves. So a way I keep myself in check is, you know, I say affirmations to myself every day, all throughout the day. Like it's never a day go by where I don't say them. I have a whole list of them that I say out to myself first thing when I wake up and then all just throughout the day. Like I am great. I'm strong. I am powerful. I'm resilient. I attract money abundantly. I am great. I am prosperous. You just say these things to your spirit because it's seeping to your subconscious mind. So when we are awake, our conscious mind is what's always the number one thing going for us. But 
people don't know the subconscious mind is what controls us. So no matter if you're telling your conscious mind all these great things all the time, if it don't seep into the subconscious, you won't see that big change, that shift you're looking to make. So the more you repeat the affirmations to yourself, you're now like tricking your brain to believe the great things that you're saying to yourself. You may not currently be what you're saying, but you keep saying it, you're going to be programming your brain to trick your brain to believe that what you're saying is true. So another hack for that is, you know, uh, right before you go to sleep, so now your frontal cortex, your conscious mind is now off and your subconscious mind is now picking up things. Like you ever go to sleep, listen to music, and then you wake up and then that song's still playing in your head? Right, right, right. So you got to do that, but with the affirmations. Put some affirmations on when you're going to sleep, great ones that you want to have happen for yourself. And let them just play all the time. And your subconscious mind going to pick all that stuff up. And then when it picks it up, you're going to just start feeling like you are what you said you are. And then you're going to start looking like you are who you say you are. Then you're going to start maneuvering like how you are you say you are. But it, it take a lot of work. It take a lot of consistency. But it all pay off, though. Okay. Okay. That was dope. Uh, could you tell me what, what are your future goals for Saj Fit and just for you personally over the next two, three years? Um, I would say definitely just to expand my brand and my awareness. Um, I'm definitely going to be having more online-based uh, services for a lot of people um, to where they can subscribe to what I have to improve their health. Say a lot of people... They don't live in Delaware or even on the East Coast or maybe not even in the U.S., but they want to tap in with what I got going on. So I want to have, you know, more online-based online, online based services for them. And also, you know, just stepping up my products to make them more commercialized. Like, they look good and all that, but I want it to be more of a something that you can have or write into a store. Like, yo, this look like I just bought this from Acme or something like that. So, okay. you know, just stepping up my branding, uh, stepping up my knowledge base, continuing to improve myself, and then, um, yeah, just keep the mission the same, pretty much, but at a broader scale. Okay. And where can everybody else uh, find you at? Um, you know, uh, if they want to follow you, get in contact with you, get right. your products. Um, so you can follow my personal page, it's Saj the God. Then also, um, my business page is Saj Fit underscore. Um, that's on Instagram. That's the only platform I use right now. I'm not on Twitter. You know, all that stuff. I got a Facebook, but I don't I don't be on Facebook, bro. But so you can just hit me on Instagram and you know, send me a DM, you can know, comment, you know, and I get back to you as soon as possible. I get back to people at a pretty quick rate. Or you can also send me a personal email at sajfit at gmail dot com. Um the website is sajfit dot com. You know, so I just looking to hear from a lot of people on how I can serve them and, you know, tap you into just becoming the best version of yourself. Okay. All right, bro. Well, this was great, man. Again, thank <laughs> you for the opportunity. Um, this is another episode of Savage Town TV. I'm your host, A.B. Brizzy, again. Got my boy, Saj, with me. You know, Saj Nutrition. Guys, get with him. I'm definitely about to get with him, get some, uh, definitely make some moves, man. Uh, healthy, holistic lifestyle. Thank yes, you sir. again for coming, bro. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate y'all, too, for tuning in. No problem. See you guys later. Peace. All right, peace.